after Titanic's midsection crumbles, could the bow and stern still be connected? Did a large section of hull bottom hold the ship together for a brief period underwater? To investigate this theory, researchers need to find this missing link that connected Titanic's bow and stern. Back at the site, the search is on for the phantom piece of hull. Start to sink here. Former French Navy commander P.H. Najolet believes he saw the large hull section more than a decade ago. He thinks it might be in an area of debris some distance from the stern. Najolet, however, is not exactly certain of its coordinates. Previous attempts to find it have failed. On this map, here is the bow section, here is the stern section. I don't remember if it was in 94 or 96. We tried to, to, see, to, see, to see again this piece and we don't found it. There are intakes on this piece here. I think maybe know. I was dreaming, you know. <laughs> maybe it's a dream. If investigators can find the missing piece that held the bow and stern together, it will be one of the most intriguing discoveries of the expedition. The piece could help them reconstruct when and how the bow and stern actually separated. To find the piece, Magellan sweeps the outermost portion of the stern wreckage, working inward to the stern itself. The team begins its search late at night embarking on a lonely trek across the debris field. Yeah, we're going to move straight ahead. There's some stuff up here. Sounds cool. I understand you're moving out of 320. Yeah. Right. Some small stuff right here. About 290. Just before dawn, the team is down to a skeleton crew. The bridge is quiet. The Magellan pilots guide the ROV closer and closer to the stern wreckage. Suddenly, out of the darkness, the team spots something massive. Could it be the missing hull bottom that they were looking for? Okay, Bridge, we assume that we're sitting on the piece here. You gotta wake the scientists up. That's the line. The scientists are roused out of bed to verify the discovery. Do you see the CV kit on your right of the screen? Just about 4.30, I had a knock on the door with a very pleased announcement that uh, we found it, we came right down on it. What it was was a huge section of the bottom of the ship. I am sure that those who look for the uh, beauty of chandeliers would yawn over it, but to an engineer, it was magnificent. For the team, the phantom piece is quite an impressive find. At that point, because that's where... They calculate it's a staggering 92 and a half feet across. This is a pretty big piece here. It spanned the entire width of Titanic. Zero. Try a few different things on this sonar here. 
It also exceeds 26 feet in length. Its tattered condition provides testimony to its incredible story. The fact that the edges are bent and not cracked indicates that it was slowly pulled apart. Unlike the decks above, it did not give way rapidly. In the center of the piece is a massive beam called the keel. Given its torturous appearance, it was probably the very last part of the ship to break. With this evidence, it now seems likely that when Titanic disappeared beneath the ocean waves, she was still in one piece. But somewhere in the first 500 feet, the hull bottom finally gave way. Here, the bow and stern began their separate and very different journeys. Ironically, Titanic's keel, the last section to give way during the breakup, was the first piece laid down during the ship's construction. When these ships were built, they were built from the bottom up. The, the first thing you laid was the double bottom. This is the backbone of the ship. It was the last line of defense in the end. It was the last thing holding that ship together. 